was watching this movie with Boris Karloff. In it, he tells a story, and he tells about how only a disgusting guy would invent a son. And the story goes, this morning. <laughs> hey, Monday, you spaghetti. John Arbuckle, Jack Benny. Ship towed your body to Abu Dhabi. Great act, what do you call it? I'm Gilbert. It's Gilbert Garfield. Yeah, I'm Gilbert. I'm Gilbert Garfield. Welcome back to Pagan Valley, everyone. Tonight, we're looking at a lesser-known series that someone sent me on Twitter several months ago that, at first glance, immediately hooked me in. What I originally thought was a fun horror series spoof of Garfield has quickly spiraled out of control into one of the most disturbing ARGs I've ever played. Since July, I've been playing this game, solving clues, cracking codes, and writing this script. And tonight, we're going to go through it piece by piece together. But I want to make it clear right away that this ARG is not finished yet. And while my script was getting longer and longer, I made the decision to stop at a certain point and make this video. The cost of this is that the ARG is going to continue on while I edit, but there will be a part 2 to this video picking up where we leave off. Who doesn't like Garfield? The lovable fat cat who loves lasagna and hates Mondays. Most of you know where this is going because Garfield has transcended from popular comic strip to a pretty good TV show, live action movies, and finally into an existential nightmare that now plagues the internet in various forms. And you're probably thinking we're going to talk about Lasagna Cat, a web series that was extremely popular for its Tim and Eric editing and absolutely insane ending. But we aren't in this video. You all know me by now. I like to talk about the small channels, the ones that pour just as much of their heart and souls into their series but just aren't as big. And tonight, we're looking at a different addition to the horror catalog of Garfield that continues the nightmarish legacy of the world's most beloved orange cat. We are looking at a series called Gilbert Garfield. It all begins on a channel of the same name, Gilbert Garfield. Sitting at around 7,000 subscribers, this internet series has sort of gained a cult following. And hopefully by the end of this video, you will all be fans of this series too, because it's everything I love in a horror project on YouTube. Going to the about section of the channel, we get this message. Some friends of mine in Hollywood discovered an old box of tapes they gave me when I graduated college. I recently went through them and discovered they contain episodes of the predecessor of Garfield and Friends, where Gilbert Gottfried, famous from Hollywood Squares, plays the titular Garfield. When I can restore clips, I will upload them here. Restoring old gloss media and uploading them on YouTube? Oh yeah, that's the stuff I like to talk about. It's a method we've seen in series like Paranormal Paranoids and No Through Road, where the YouTube channel is not just the method to present the series, but is actively a part of the created project. Meaning that the creators of the series are going for a real as possible approach to delivering the story which will all become more obvious as we also look at the Gilbert Garfield Twitter as well as the main channel. But as always, I invite you to go watch this series for yourself before watching my video because I think it's more fun to watch through it alone and just get ambushed by the series 
before listening to me pick apart any clues hidden within them. So please take a moment to pause this video and come back once you've caught up. Ready? Then let's dive into the surreal, imaginative ARG that is Gilbert Garfield. The first video on the channel is called Gilbert Garfield Introduction. In the description, we are told an introduction to what this channel is about, preserving clips of the apparently cancelled Gilbert Garfield project. This video has no vocal narration, but does have closed captions explaining that the person filming has a friend named Austin who is compiling old Garfield footage from the 80s and 90s for a college capstone project. But our lead character, who is named Max by the way, mentions that while finding these old tapes, they had found an extra length of film called Gilbert Garfield Crossover from 1987. We see them enter a storage facility where he finds the lost media tape of the same name while telling us that it's damaged and they'll upload what they can salvage from it before our video ends. While also on June 8th of this year, a Twitter account was created by Max to document what they want to find in these tapes. The second video on the channel is called Gilbert Garfield Recovered Clip Number 1. The description reads, this seems to be from the episode Garfield and Odie Kill John, which is already a big departure from the lore of the original Garfield and Friends series. I'm interested in what's next. Does Garfield go to space prison? What is space like for him? Should we call him Gilbert? And the video is, well, this. I was watching this movie with Boris Karloff. In it, he tells a story, and he tells about how only a disgusting Italian would invent lasagna. And the story goes, this old Italian grandma, which they call Nona, was so ashamed her pasta was only a, a, a big rectangle. And then she tried to hide it with mozzarella, but it just looked like a Caucasian melty flesh. Okay, so we're already getting so much thrown at us. Obviously, the title Gilbert Garfield means an old Garfield cartoon with famous comedian Gilbert Godfrey's face placed over Garfield's and with Godfrey voicing the character as well. Garfield in this episode is standing in his house talking about a movie he watched that mentioned lasagna until Odie appears only to be immediately shot in front of him followed by this alien creature appearing and putting Garfield in handcuffs. The alien also says in subtitles, Say in arresto Garfield, por favor mette le zamp in questione manet, which is bad Italian for, You're under arrest Garfield, please put your paws in these handcuffs. This is followed by Garfield being abducted by the alien, then we get to see that Garfield has apparently murdered John, but we also can hear some audio while John's body is being shown. A big rectangle, and then she tried to hide it with mozzarella, but it just looked like a Caucasian melty flesh. Now, I have tried deciphering this bit of audio. From what I can tell, it's just a continuation of the story that Garfield was telling when the alien arrested him. Lastly, we see John's house before the alien ship that abducted Garfield destroys John and John's house altogether.
So Garfield, voiced by Gilbert Godfrey, has murdered John before being arrested by Italian space aliens that may have also shot Odie before making the arrest. Alright, well, it's not the craziest thing we've covered on this channel. Italian aliens, Garfield was talking about lasagna, lasagna is somewhat an Italian food, it makes sense. The next video is called Gilbert Garfield Recovered Clip Number 2, and the description reads this. For some reason, this clip was interlaced with an old yoga tape. The work put into keeping this episode alive was shoddy at best. I'm curious as to how long this alien or aliens have wanted Gilbert. What scares me the most is whatever is printing in the background. Restoring these clips has kept me awake late into the night, and I'm getting weird chills whenever I think about them. This clip continues after Garfield's arrest, where we see this. I am so she takes through her disgusting Italian jar for the only liquid she has to cover her shame. Tomato sauce. And now keep in mind, most of what I know of the Italian culture comes from the great homosexual comedian Chico Marx of the Marx Brothers family. And he was Jewish, you know, not, not a real Italian. <laughs> Dead alien reminds me of the golden age of Holly, where you could stick anything up your ass and no one would ask the wiser question as long as the studio heads had your back. So now we know that Gilbert Garfield is completely insane. While he does recognize what's happening around him, he chooses to tell stories like in a stand-up routine. We learn that Garfield is wanted by these aliens, and we are shown why as he reveals some ungodly power that decimates the alien. Also, the alien said before its brutal death, Presto arrimo a la prigione spaziale, which translates to soon will arrive at the space prison. So Garfield must know he's being hunted by these aliens, but has decided to murder his captor, leaving him alone on the spaceship. The third clip on the channel is definitely one of the most bizarre, and if this was a real TV show, it must have been some kind of adult parody of Garfield, because, well, take a look. arrested for a future crime reminds me of the precogs from the Steven Spielberg 2002 adaptation of Minority Report, which is not about a Japanese newspaper. Of course, I know all of this because of my third eye that can see into the future. And my fourth eye in my asshole. That can see the past. I'm hungry. Ground veal. Ground veal. Ground veal. Ground veal. I'm an anomaly. Hmm. Well, I feel like a dick. A Philip Now, I've seen a lot on this channel, but this. this is true art. As this couldn't have become any more complex, now time travel has been established in this cartoon, 
and we are told that Garfield was arrested for a future crime that he and Odie would commit in 1989. But this episode aired in 1987, so does that mean that scene of John Arbuckle hasn't occurred yet? We also get a flash of the Japanese Emperor from World War II, Hirohito, as Garfield talks about a movie. Then we see that Garfield has three eyes and a <coughs> hidden fourth one. Can expand to a being that dwarfs the earth by eating raw baby cow meat and create a void in space by eating all of earth, which I assume is the end of the episode. And if this is a TV show, then the next episode will start with everything back to normal. But something feels off about this program, and our character who is salvaging this footage is starting to feel the same way in the description. For a brief side note on Twitter, the character tweets this and also gets this response. Whoever this mad lad is definitely has a better eye than me and replied to Max with this. Is it coincidence or is this series really that detailed? And based on what we've seen so far, I'll guess it's the latter. Anyway, our fourth recovered clip has this in the description. In an odd retelling of Exodus, centuries pass for Gilbert. More frightening still is the fact that the address is really close to my stepdad's place. I don't know. Looks like I might have missed something early in the tape I'm going to try and recover. Pharaoh Gilbert Garfield, you've doomed the Jewish people to suffering and slavery. Being notoriously frugal, I not only enjoy free hotel shampoos, but free manual labor when building my great pyramids of geese. Has the god of Abraham's plagues not moved you? Your own firstborn is dead just this morning. Well... The good news is, Michael Jackson won't try to molest him anymore. Humor? At a time like this, brother? Is it not too soon? When you perceive time non-linear, there is no such thing as too soon or too late. There are only two words. Baked zini! I must go! This clip actually does follow after Garfield enters the void, where he throws up all the raw veal which, after another century, becomes one of the pyramids of Egypt. So Garfield has gone back in time to the biblical age, as he is now the pharaoh during the book of Exodus in the Bible. Obviously when Moses comes, who is played by John's neighbor Lyman, Garfield explains that time is meaningless to him as he is now ascended above even the Egyptian gods it seems. Now I know there are some Egyptian hieroglyphs being used as subtitles, but the VHS filter really makes it difficult to make out each symbol in order to decode it. One commenter on the video claims it is translated to join me in the sun, Pharaoh, the cycle is beginning. Which if this is the translation, then this is the Egyptian god of Ra speaking to Garfield, since Garfield is the Pharaoh. And the creepiness doesn't end there because at the end of the video, we get an address that our character Max knows about, since it's apparently close to his stepdad's house, which is really unnerving for them, I can imagine. The address points to Wine Country, California. 
Back on Twitter, our character says the fifth clip is the last one on the tape, and they seem relieved to have it be over with. The description reads, This is the last bit of footage I've managed to digitize so far. Real gruesome, unpleasant, not sure about the company mentioned at the end. John Arbuckle, why can't I stop seeing things? John, why can't I stop seeing John? Just poke my eyes out like your mow hours! Hey, Monday, you spaghetti. John Arbuckle, Jack Benny. Ship towed your body to Abu Dhabi. Great act, what do you call it? I'm Gilbert. It's Gilbert Garfield. Yeah, I'm Gilbert. I'm Gilbert Garfield. Alright, so let's unpack this. The first piece of evidence is that we see a calendar for the year 1989 with a marked date in blood, which could be that future crime referred to when Garfield and Odie would kill John. Next, we are introduced to a character named Jack Benny, which really stands out in the intro for the show, but unfortunately through the ARG, this Jack Benny hasn't been talked about too much. Lastly, we are also shown a list of producers who all have Italian names, and the name of the production company who has made the show, Ferrone, which is Italian for Pharaoh, and this company is connected back to the Egyptian imagery which we saw in the previous video. So Max has found a lost media tape of a show from the late 80s that clearly was ahead of its time with surreal animation, and they have saved it all for us to enjoy. So there's nothing more to talk about, right? Back on Twitter one day later, our main character tweets this. Somebody told me to reach out to Austin. I was going to hand the reins over to him, but after trying to call him and text him a few times, he sent me this picture, and now it seems like the messages aren't going through. So yeah, that is a truly disturbing thing to get from your friend with no other message. What has happened to Austin? On the channel, the main character posts a video saying how he's happy to be done salvaging the footage as it's giving him nightmares. But as his video goes on, it seems that the Gilbert Garfield show is corrupting the main character's footage, which results in the last line of the video having a glitch where the word joining turns into this. The name John is revealed. Someone got into my fucking accounts. I'm changing all my passwords and recovery emails and double authenticating and blah blah blah, but I'm fucking pissed. Who the fuck even uses these stupid fucking flip androids? Someone has hacked Max's channel and Twitter to upload a video. The description which reads, drink or not. So there was a lot of code, so to save some time I'm going to talk about what I feel are the most important to appear in this video. First the phrase, you've lost your appetite, appears in Odie's eyes, followed by an image of either an Egyptian or a Roman soldier, followed by text that reads, Roman Emperor go to the, 
and an arrow points to a grapevine. This is followed by a single frame of a map, which we'll look at in a minute. Next, after the image of John, we get a single frame of a blurred image of a man, followed by a photo of Emperor Augustus of Rome. Last thing of importance is a website called foronetruth.com. Before we look at that website, I'm first going to try to make sense of all of this. At the end of the fourth clip, we were shown an address in Wine Country, California, which is where this video is telling the Roman Emperor to go to by showing us grapevines. So is this the location of the map that is shown for a single frame in the video? If it is, then who is the Roman Emperor? Well, we got a snapshot of Augustus, the first Emperor of Rome, but remember that time is now non-linear in this series. So my theory is that this blurred photo is of a new Roman emperor in the 1980s, who is told by the video to go to wine country California, because Romans and wine connect to each other. So let's go to that website before we continue. Going to feronetruth.com brings you to this site, and yes, you can go here right now, but it may look a little different as it changes all the time in this ARG. First, you will notice the drawing of Gilbert Garfield playing piano and a chat box under him. When I clicked on it, I was able to type a message and didn't get any reply back after I sent it. Next, I will direct your eyes to the tabs at the top. Most of them are locked by a guest password, which after trying every little detail in this series for damn near 30 minutes, I can admit that I have not found it yet. But the tab you can follow takes you to the catalog of all of Ferone's animations, and some are more suspicious than others. First, we can tell that a lot of these projects have to do with cats, which are related to the gods of Egypt, which clearly Ferone Productions has been linked to. But the post about Gilbert Garfield looks oddly familiar. Could this be one of the images that Austin sent our main character that we saw on Twitter? If it is, then does that mean that Austin's phone has been hacked by Ferone Productions? Scrolling down the website, you can also find an email subscribe box to stay in contact with the company. Naturally, I threw mine in there, and a little pop-up message under the box read, Join the Sun. Again, another reference to the sun god Ra. Now, I don't know what I've gotten myself into with this email. Nothing has been sent to me since. But if anything does, I will post it on Twitter and show it in the next video. As for the rest of the website, Ferone Productions seems to be eager for visitors to learn about their winery. Now, could this mean that their winery is located in Wine Country, California? Well, if that's the case, then I don't think this company is from Italy. Wrong. Hey. Let's look back at those clips. Garfield has been portrayed several times as the Pharaoh, and the alien that tried to imprison Garfield was speaking Italian, Italy being the home of Rome and its emperor. There is still a lot to cover in this ARG, however, I want to propose that what we have been shown in these clips are referencing some big event in 1989. We are told that time is circular, so could, in 1989, there have been a return of the pharaoh and a return of the Roman emperor. Back on YouTube, the channel posts a vlog called Message Received. In the description, our character says, Weird update, I'm reaching out to my stepdad as this is uploading. My memories of this moment are kind of a haze. I was just filming my girlfriend playing with our cat when I heard a knock at the door. Hey, what you doing? <laughs> For a second. What's up? Is someone coming? Did you invite? Did you invite someone over? 
Так. So someone left a wine glass and a Garfield toy for our character, and we also saw that the tapes have bled into the character's smartphone. On Twitter, Max also adds that he blacked out for two hours after he pursued the person who delivered the message. Max also says that the incident has pushed him to reach out to his stepfather to go investigate the address in wine country. Which is the title of the next video, where the description reads, Had my stepdad investigate the wine country address at Bogendale Drive. I'm curious about a few things. I'm going to check out that stained glass fixture more soon, eager to see what's on the card. The video shows the character's stepdad following the address to an empty lot. After walking around, he finds a fake window with some art in the glass. Sitting before the window, he finds a rock with the words Rise from the Ashes engraved on it. And before you tell me, yes, I tried that phrase as the password to the website, but still no luck. Buried beneath the rock is a box filled with wood pyramids and a pair of shoes. After digging around, the stepdad finds an SD card that the main character Max plans to have sent to him. Back on Twitter, Max analyzes the fake window in the fence where he makes out an Egyptian landscape with a pyramid, a river, and a sun. The following day, he posts another video on the channel titled, The SD Card Came In. The description reads, Someone on Twitter thinks I'm being pulled into a cycle or something. A mysterious TikTok account is uploading clips of the cartoon we restored. I restored. I have no idea what a .mfr extension is or what the math in the text file signifies. In the video, our character finds two files on the SD card his stepdad found. One of them is a text file called extension, and the other is .mfr file, which he can't open without the right software. In that extension text, he highlights certain numbers which may be an extension for him to call. And a .mfr file is a file with a plastic ejection code written in it for a factory machine to create, which doesn't make any sense. But what does make sense is this person's reply on Twitter when our character asks for help. The .mfr code is for a NES ROM, which means that not only was a TV show made by Ferone, but now a video game from the late 80s was also created for Gilbert Garfield, which our character manages to salvage in the next video called Let's Play Gilbert Garfield's Week Part 1, Tuesday. The description of the Let's Play reads this. The gameplay ends with a countdown that brings me back to the starting screen. I can't tell what I need to do to go further in the game. 
this seems even more ominous than the tape. I can't tell if I'm playing this game, or if whoever made it, hacked it, whatever, is playing with me. Perhaps at Grintly. The headaches are back. The video game menu comes up and we can immediately find Ferone in the credits at the bottom as being the owner of the Gilbert Garfield property. Starting the game brings up Gilbert's head and we get this message with an ominous Amen at the end as if Gilbert Garfield gave this prayer. As we follow Garfield in this side-scroller game, we watch as he completes the first level until he enters a building with the Eye of Ra on it which is also the logo of Ferone Productions. Inside, Garfield meets with this mass of human flesh that tells Garfield that he isn't Gilbert Gottfried and that it's time to do the cycle again. Remember, we were told about this cycle in an early clip of the TV show when Garfield spoke with the Egyptian gods. This cycle seems to be at least part of what is giving Gilbert Garfield his powers and Ferone is the one helping him. Okay, so time for a very long side tangent. Following the Twitter account will take you down some very strange rabbit holes. The first one comes in the reference to Gilbert Garfield made in this post that tagged our main character. Following the link takes you to this dead website. After using the Wayback Machine to dig up the website's corpse, I found a website called JohnHinkleyNow.com, a website dedicated to fans of the man who tried to assassinate Ronald Reagan. Emailing this website when it was alive would get your picture onto the collage of fan photos. In the catalog of photos, you can find this one of a fan holding up a sign with a picture of Gilbert Garfield drawn on it. Following this discovery, another Twitter account tags our character with this now-deleted tweet from a now-deleted account. This reply to the Hinkley photo links an article that talks about the Reagan assassination attempt, where Hinkley was tackled by a man named Alfred Antonucci, who was from, get this, Garfield Heights. The second rabbit hole follows directly after the Hinkley one with a character named Greg Truth Official. A Twitter account that our main character has retweeted included two classified CIA documents on Project Eraser, where the CIA researched how to manipulate the human embryo before it grows into a fetus. I will now read the following transcript between a Senator Kennedy of the U.S. Congress and a leader of Project Eraser within the CIA. Joining with me will be Toby from Toby Pasta playing the voice of a Mr. Goldman.
I am perfectly willing to tell you everything that I can remember. But you can't remember anything? I can't remember the substantive part of these things. I really can't. There are some things that are lost to time. And linear time is a tricky thing. A tricky concept for me to wrap my head around. Of the program that was taking place, do you have any greater familiarity with what was happening over at Ferone Productions? No. No. But Ferone Productions was receiving government grants to conduct research. I don't have any knowledge of that. I'm sorry. Did you ever go to San Francisco? Yes. Did you meet with Sig Gottlebino? Yes. And why did you meet with him? To discuss a few of the comic strips he was searching for. Mr. Gottlebino was an avid collector of comic strips. And this was related to the research being done? Yes, Gottlebino said that the comics were the key to a large area of the research. He didn't elaborate and I didn't press him. You travel out there to discuss comic strips, and what does he tell you? He told me that the work that they were doing was going along, progressing satisfactorily. But, to be very frank with you... But he didn't tell you what the work was. To be very frank with you, Senator, I cannot remember the things that happened back in those days. I've told you time and time again, I have trouble remembering those days. Did they disperse a series of uniquely labeled vials to your recollection? I don't recollect it, but if you do have it there, then they did. So this is proof that Ferone Productions is more than just an animation production studio. Ten years before the production of the Gilbert Garfield show, they were clearly funded by the CIA to conduct testing for Project Eraser. But at some point something in vials was leaked by Ferone, which was the reason the CIA agent was brought before Congress. But look at his wording. He mentions how time doesn't make sense to him when it's linear. Very similar to what Garfield told Lyman when he was a pharaoh. So going back to the Twitter account who posted this document, Real Greg Truth is probably the most accurate portrayal of a crazy conspiracist I've seen in a series. Going through his Twitter, you will find ramblings regarding CIA theories and other random the government is watching me type tweets. One of the first red flags on Greg's Twitter is this thread where Greg claims that Ferone has ties to the fascist leader of Italy, Mussolini. Another important tweet is this one where Greg says, perhaps Reagan was not what he seems it would seem. And don't forget that Hinckley was tackled before assassinating Ronald Reagan by a man named Antonucci, an Italian last name. Strange. Next important tweet is this one with a phone number to a tip line to Greg, a number that I actually called and got this. I quickly left a voicemail to Greg saying that I had info on the Ferone conspiracy. Continuing on Twitter, we learn that Greg's Truthmobile suddenly quit working despite it never having any problems. Also, Greg links his website. On it, we are ambushed by a lot of information about Greg's likes. 
Apparently Greg is a big Family Guy fan as well as a fan of McDonald's, because he can use their free Wi-Fi to make his posts. According to the follow-up on his website, Greg believes that the CIA sabotaged his car since he's been talking about Ferone, and when he goes to the repair shop, he is told his car can't be repaired, which he also blames on the mechanics being paid off by the country of Italy. Out of curiosity, I searched up Greg Truth on YouTube and found a channel of the same name. Following the car situation, we got a video called Ferone Mechanic Gets the Bird, which shows this. So Greg managed to fix his car on his own, but before we look at those other videos, let's go back to the website. If you click on hobbies at the top, we learn that Greg has wrote his own script for Family Guy that he has sent to Fox. Scrolling down, we get to see some of Greg's fan art of the show, which can be a little off-putting the more you scroll. Next, let's read the Ferone investigation on Greg's website. Basically, Greg is on the same page as us as he knows about Gilbert Garfield because he had visited the Ferone Truth website. Also, believing that this is not a kid's show and that it may actually be programming since Project Eraser is within MKUltra at the CIA. At the bottom of the blog, Greg adds additional documents tied to the two we already read, so let's pick out the unclassified words within them. However, sensitive matters, substances, human, unethical, laboratories, modus operandi, which translates into mode of operation, biological, approvers, Sig Gattolibino. That last one, that was the man Mr. Goldman of the CIA was in contact with at Ferroni Productions in San Francisco. Let's go back to Greg's YouTube channel. The second video on it is called Los Angeles Ferroni Investigation Number 1. Most of the video is Greg wandering around LA and going into buildings that have nothing to do with the government and asking confused workers about Ferone. But there are two important scenes you need to watch. Take a look. This is my first time in LA, and I'm looking for uh, Ferone. It's a it's a production studio, production studio. But I, I don't see a lot of cameras around or cartoons. Right, right. But where do you keep the cartoon? Los Angeles, right? This is where they make Family Guy. Yeah, that's our that's our location. But we're a bowling center. Oh, yeah. Obviously. Obviously, yeah. <laughs> Appreciate you, brother. No problem. I mean, I wish I could help more. Yeah, yeah. Actually, 
Do you have a payphone? I, I don't want to use my hotline minutes. Son, it's, it's me, it's your pop. Listen, I'm, I actually happen to be in the area. I, I got an extra burger here. Um, well, son, uh, just give me a call back on the hotline number and, um, yeah. Sorry about that. That's quite all right there, brother. I mean, at least you picked up the phone when it rained. A lot of people these days don't seem to do that. They make all kinds of crap, you know, kids' cartoons with Satan in them and shit like that, you know? Sick. Yeah. Put all this sick shit in the kids' cartoon. Who's in charge of oh. that? Or who's sending you here? No, no, no. Nobody, nobody sends me anywhere, you know? I'm on my own accord. I'm... Nobody has this dog on a leash. Oh, well, what's the person's name? Uh... Well, it would probably be under a name like, uh, Ferrari or Romano. Oh, well, not too sure. You're not, oh, you're not too sure. Oh. Hey there, how you doing tonight, sweetheart? Uh, listen, I'm, I'm, I'm looking for a production studio, and everyone in this town doesn't seem to want to help me. They're a little Italian outfit. This, this is their website. There's all kinds of these satanic crap. You seem like a well-traveled gal, you know, so maybe, you, maybe you've seen some guys coming in here with, uh, you know, pizza stains on their, on their track suits, using a, using a toothpick. Anybody like that come in here? I'm looking for Ferrone Productions. Yeah, well, that's not what this is. Can you stop doing really? that? Really? Because it looks like you got a lot of cameras. You're not really supposed to film back here. Oh, you're yeah. Just to you ever film anything for the attack? Serious, stop. Oh, Turn it off. you're a feisty boy, huh? <laughs> Seriously, stop fucking putting it in my face. I'll like, put my thing. camera wherever I damn well please. That doesn't mean anything. You're on private property. Yeah, it's filming. easy. Yeah, you're in a you place where you're supposed spell? to have any... Um, do you want to come in and sit down or do you want to fucking leave? Well, what do you want to well, do? Well, why? So you can have the cops come by? Seriously. Yeah, what are you, dude? Yeah, what are you? So Greg has a son that won't stay in contact with him, and at the end of the video we see him leave a McDonald's cheeseburger at an apartment door before leaving. Strange, and oddly familiar. Let's keep moving. Back on Twitter, our main character seems to be in contact with Greg, and an altercation turns into internet beef between them. With our main character clearly afraid of Greg, and Greg claiming that our main character is a double agent for Ferrone Productions. But Greg's Twitter really starts to show signs of a mental disorder, as he has mood swings that jumps from ranting about Ferrone to tweeting things like, please call me son, showing us a tragic and more vulnerable side to his character. But it all goes off the rails when Greg starts targeting this man named Raphael Kosak. All because in a photo on this random guy's social media, he's with another guy with a name tag that says Ferone on it. Realizing Greg is in a bad place, a Twitter follower named Rose sends a dox to Greg saying it's Kosak's private information. Which leads us to the next video titled, Don't Trust Internet Liars. In it we see that Greg has actually followed through and went to the location in Rose's post. 
And just when Greg realizes he's been trolled and he's at a stranger's house, the police arrive and Greg is forced to hide in bushes. Then this occurs. Oh shit! Oh fuck! Oh my god! Oh, Rose! God damn it, Rose, you sent me to the wrong house! Hey Greg, good 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 work out there. Love what you're doing. Find the damn truth. End of message. To delete this message, press seven. To message deleted. Next message. Hey Greg, what's up, man? Um, uh, I'm not anything about Gilbert or Road, but uh, I hope you find leads. Message deleted. Hi Greg, this is good. This is uh. Jerry, I'm trying to contact you about the info you have about Ferone. Message deleted. Hello, Mr. Greg Truth. I uh, am a watcher of... Message deleted. Hey, Greg. I was wondering if you had any more info on the uh, Gilbert God... Message deleted. Hi, Greg. I'm one of your biggest fans. You're so cool. And all your investigations are very... Very, very message deleted. Hello, hello. Message deleted. I was wondering if I could uh, get a little more insight on that whole Ferrone. Message deleted. Hey, Greg, it's me. Uh, we were just texting about the script you're showing me. Have you found any leads? You seem to be really obsessed with this car mechanic and him fucking up your really, really old car. That is a beast, by the way. No, no offense to your car. Message deleted. Hi, Greg. Just checking in on you. Love you. Bye. Greg really likes Family Guy, but that's not even the strangest part of the video. The remainder of the video is Greg listening to the voicemails that people left on the hotline the actual voicemails. Unfortunately, mine didn't make the cut, but this has to be a reference by the creator to the Lasagna Cat ARG, since that series also had the audience leaving voicemails that they used in a later video. The last part of the video is Greg typing in a text box that says he is retiring from investigating Ferone. So let's go back to Max's channel and continue this video game that Ferone Productions developed. And apparently this game was developed with Konami because our character discovers a Konami code that can be entered into Gilbert Garfield's Weekend. The next level is titled Wednesday and the description reads, I've managed to get through the countdown at the end of level 1. However, things are only getting stranger. I will be posting on Twitter the dialogue box choices I can make in the next recording session I have the energy to do.
So it's finally connected. This is the link between our main character and all the conspiracies Greg was talking about. After using a crouch code in the game, our main character teleports to an in-game version of the Ferone Laboratory. And what level was this in? The Wine Tour. There was absolutely a laboratory in Wine Country, California where Ferone Productions is, and we even get more insight on what Ferone and the CIA were creating. Remember how that document said the research was to manipulate embryos? Well, they're doing this by coding them with certain personalities, or maybe even the souls themselves, letting Garfield choose from a list of who he wants to become. And right now, there are three options, Augustus Caesar, Gilbert Godfrey, or Ronald Reagan. All of them characters this ARG has referenced and given instructions to. Someone in the real world has been coded as Augustus Caesar, and that's who the message was for from Ferone. And Hinckley tried to assassinate Ronald Reagan before being stopped by an Italian man. So if that was a Ferroni agent, then they knew they had created the President of the United States at that time. Now let's quickly talk about that TikTok account. If you find the account at Grintley, then you may think it's just a re-upload profile for the series, but look at the descriptions of each video. Definitely something to keep an eye on as we continue. The next clip of the video game comes with this description. I've developed a new condition. I'm also not very good at video games. This clip begins in the level called Discarded Originals. In the level, Garfield goes through a graveyard before reaching these three headstones, each of them meant for one of the subjects in Ferroni's lab, Augustus Caesar, Gilbert Godfrey, and Ronald Reagan. When our character clicks on the Augustus one, we are shown text that says Augustus wasn't the chosen one and that Ferone discarded him. But when Garfield chooses Gilbert Godfrey, this happens. Now didn't those shoes look familiar? They were black sneakers, and they looked to be the same pair that our character Max's stepdad found in the buried lockbox. These shoes could be a weapon against whatever cosmic horror Ferone is working with. But after Garfield defeats it, our video ends. Well, I'm going to cheat a little. This Ugu that was referenced in the video game happens to be the password to the Ferone website, so let's go back there. Typing in Ugu into the site will bring you this. First thing you'll notice is the video that begins to play, but we'll pass over it because our main character will also play it in a future video. But scrolling down, we can listen to the soundtrack from the cartoon by clicking a link. Following it takes us to the entire track list. After vibing to the opening theme song, if we listen through the rest, we can tell that the last few songs are strange. Take a listen. Hey, Monday. 
days eat spaghetti The John good Jack Penny Shipped out his corpse to Abu Dhabi Great act, what do you call it? I'm Gilbert Gilbert Garfield The original of Brad Strict cat meow 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 meow
right, so there is definitely codes hidden in these tracks. Listening to the song Finley's Breeze, we can hear a rhythmic instrument play in a beat. But listening more closely reveals that it isn't in the same pattern through the track. Immediately, my mind started writing down dashes and dots in case this was a Morse code. It would also make sense there is a Morse code hidden somewhere because Finley Breeze is the two middle names for Samuel Morse, the creator of the Morse code. So after some investigating, I believe I have found the code within the song. Amplifying the track reveals a slight heartbeat-like sound that is layered under the original track within every use of the instrument. Try to hear it. See what I mean? It's very faint. But I went through the whole track with pen and paper and wrote down a dash if the heartbeat was missing and a dot if the heartbeat was present. The final code, when decrypted, came out as mostly gibberish, so it's probably an error on my part. That's the beauty of Morse code. If you fuck up one dot or dash, the whole thing crumbles. But what I managed to get from the code were the first two words in the message. I am. Next on the album is Lyman doing the bad date, which when listening closely seems to be an old travel brochure from Italy that is trying to get people to come visit. But at the end, the tape says things that are very cult-like regarding the meaning of life and higher powers controlling humans. It's your standard red flags to visit anywhere. Lastly, in Odie's trip, I have no idea what's happening in this song. The only things we know about Odie is that he's been shot and he's been shipped to Abu Dhabi. So maybe these are the sounds of another laboratory that's based in Abu Dhabi. I don't know, but you can take a listen and let me know down below if you hear anything specific. And that's the Gilbert Garfield soundtrack. I'm sure there are more codes hidden within it, but these are the ones that I found personally. And I know other channels have been playing this ARG, so maybe they have decoded different answers. So let me know down below. Going back to the main YouTube channel, we can see that our main characters have captured that video that was on the website about the history of Ferroni Productions in an attempt to preserve it. So let's take a look and try to learn more about this Italian company. Farahoni Productions was founded in 1903, but the ideas at its core have been around for centuries. Emerging on the scene in Italy as a sponsor for Italian cyclist Rodolfo Muller during the first Tour de France, Folia del Faroni began putting on plays at the Teatro Anatomico. Their production of Uomo e Superuomo by Giorgiano Bernardino Sia opened to rave reviews friends with Francis Galton. For the enlightened former empire of Rome and the humanitarian ideal of imperial peace, Pax Romana, Pax Augusta, which, today when we team up with talented comedians to them, humanity, and better. So that was quite the jumbled mess of a history video. Ferone seemed to have started out like just any other regular show business, putting on plays and just naturally advancing into television. However, the video quickly mentions the company's beliefs in ancient Rome, and how they believe that some global order should control everything. But the video gave us two phrases that stand out the most. Pax Romana, which is Latin for Roman peace, and Pax Augusta, which is a reference to the rule of Caesar and a long period of peace and stability that Rome had under his rule. If we tie Ferone's beliefs with what we know about them, 
then perhaps their involvement with the CIA has more to do with creating a new Pax Romana by genetically engineering a new emperor. They already tried once by using Julius Caesar's DNA, which failed and was discarded. The next video on the YouTube channel gives us an update on Max, which doesn't seem to be very good. Clearly our main character has gone into a dark place to follow the breadcrumb path to Ferone, while also mocking how I look when I was putting this video together. But let's look at some things in this quick video. Notice anything on the desk? McDonald's. Now who else have we seen eating McDonald's? Greg Truth. Now, I'm not saying they are the same character because that wouldn't make any sense since the two have been in Twitter battles, but let's examine how these two could be related. We know that Max has a stepfather, and we know that Greg is clearly divorced and isn't in contact with his son. Max uploads the next level of the video game titled Friday. In this new level, the game switches from a platformer to a top-down RPG, where we are told that Odie and Gilbert Godfrey are added to the party with Garfield. In this first encounter, we see the trio fight a homunculus, which if any of you are Full Metal Alchemist fans, you know is a man-made human through science and experiments. And the game is clearly referencing the fact that Ferone is creating homunculus at their company. After the party makes it to the U.S. Acres in Wine Country, California, there they meet a rabbit called Sheldon, which is probably the name of an agent at the Wine Country company office in the real world. Garfield is a dick to him before he enters the building behind Sheldon. There, he enters the video game version of the lot that our main character's stepfather visited. There, he goes and speaks to the cat character named Orson. But in a couple of frames, the game flashes this over the name Orson, our son. After insulting the pig, Garfield enters the next building where he returns to the lot. This time, the box Max's stepfather found is there and contains a battle axe. Our character equips it on Odie before leaving the building. After leaving the vineyard, the party encounters a new creature called a T-Ghost. After defeating it, the screen goes static before the creature disappears. After the encounter, the party waits for a bus to come across the water where a new encounter begins. The bus is called the John Bus and is a mix of a bus and John Arbuckle. During the fight, Garfield uses an attack called Monday, which summons a medallion with the Egyptian god of Ra on it. Then Odie gets killed immediately by one attack, and then Gilbert Godfrey uses a time beam to do an enormous 999 points of damage. Lastly, Garfield tells the bus that the party will be traveling to the Flying Egg before the clip ends. Quickly jumping into the next clip of the game, we continue from there, and the game has a panic attack, throwing up a warning for Max to not touch the console and to not breathe. When the game finally loads, the John bus flies into literally a flying egg in the sky, crashing into the side of it. The game switches from a top-down RPG into a Doom-like first-person shooter where Garfield meets a homunculus that says, You're approaching the nexus of the birth. 
Continuing on through the A, Garfield meets another creature, which asks if the thinking man was there to save him. Garfield instead attacks the creature and takes an item to get through the next door. In the last room, Garfield and our player witness a new creature that is some form of Liz from the original comic, followed by the creature giving birth to something before the clip ends. The final clip from the game comes from the level called Monday, but first Max writes this in the description. The ROM file seems to delete itself when I get to this point. I had duplicated the ROM a few times at different checkpoints after the first file rewrite, and most choices don't seem to change much. In fact, for The Weeknd, I was only getting different cutscenes as a transition to the level. An illusion of choice. The auto-deleting made capturing difficult on my end, but I rejiggered my setup and got this. I feel like this isn't over though. I don't know whose game I'm really playing. The clip shows the following. So the game has now explained the origins of Gilbert Garfield. Augustus Caesar, Ronald Reagan, and Gilbert Godfrey's DNA have all been spliced and combined to create Gilbert Garfield, which we saw being born. Garfield is the product of Ferone, the chosen one that is supposed to bring Ferone's Pax Romana to life. Returning to Twitter, we see that the Twitter user named Rose that had trolled Greg Truth was able to recover a hidden video from the Ferone website, which was added to the main YouTube channel. Let's take a look. The video begins by the main character Max showing tweets of Luna, another real life player of the ARG. Apparently if we add up all the life counters at the beginning of each level, that was a password to the Ferone Wine Tours page. After putting in that password, we're able to go to the Wine Tours video from the website. Let's take a look. This is for running water. <laughs>
nothing like biting into a fresh from the bursting bushel of grapes. In this, in this section of the back lot, everything looks slightly foreign, and deliberately so. This is Little Europe. Nothing like biting into a grape. Head to the commissary. Catch a show. Folks come from far and wide for a little taste of little Well, we can safely say that not too many people are working at the wine country office for Ferone anymore. But did you catch that message close to the end of the video? It said, what does RK know about CV? RK must be that random guy that was photographed with an employee of Ferone Productions. Remember, the guy that Greg Truth hunted down, Raphael Kosaks. But who is CV? Before we continue, let's go back to Greg's channel and see what else he has posted. As you will notice, there aren't any more vlogs on the channel. Instead, the videos look very familiar to Grintley on TikTok. And on Twitter, Grintley's videos are being posted under Greg's name. So, where's Greg? Well, here is a testament to how fucking deep this ARG goes. Remember that random news website I just showed? Well, if you look up the Twitter of that journalist, Joshua Green, we learn the final date of Greg Truth. He's dead. Recently died on September 22nd. He was found under a vehicle with no driver. Did Ferone finally take out the person who was trying to expose them? Or could this be the work of Grintley, whose posts are now suddenly popping up on Greg's social media? Or, could Grintley actually be a Ferone agent? He certainly has a lot of footage of Gilbert Garfield that we haven't seen anywhere else, including commercials that would have aired products for the show. So as of right now in this game, our main character Max has been able to find the previous employees of Ferone Productions, and now can try reaching out to one of them, Raphael Kosaks which our character vlogs in the next video called The Saga of RK and CV. Let's take a look. The video updates us that followers of our main character on Twitter have already been reaching out to Kosaks, which has only pissed him off because he says his phone is constantly blowing up with texts and calls. Then our character gives Kosaks his phone number which leads to this voicemail from the former Ferone employee. This is then followed by another voicemail where Kosaks apologizes and says this. Fuck you! Tell your little freak goblin friends to leave me the fuck alone. I'm not talking to you about Ferone, alright? It was a million fucking years ago. Stop clogging up my hotmail. Leave me the fuck alone, you freaks. Listen, I just want to say I'm sorry for, you know, blowing up on you. It's, you know, it's not me. I just, I got a little hot. I got a little heated because you were fucking, you know, blowing up my Hotmail account. I'm sitting here with a thousand messages, and I'm trying to figure out which ones are, are business and which ones are spam and what folders they go. And it's a little, you know, it's a little infuriating, to be honest with you. But uh, I just want to say, you know, I, I'm off that Verona shit, you know. I don't even know why you're fucking talking to me, all right? I mean, I... You know, Christy was the star and all that, you know, I, I mean, I was there managing by extension, but, 
you know, I wasn't the one doing all the shit. So I, if you want to talk to her, talk to her, you know. Uh, the brought him with now, still plays Second Life with her. So, you know, I have her her, her username here. It's, um, you can, you can hit her up at, uh, you can hit her up at, Did you catch that? Cossacks almost revealed what him and Christy were doing for Ferone, but catches himself and says all that shit instead. This is followed by our character getting the username to a Second Life account that Christy plays on. Over on Second Life, our character makes an account and reaches out to Christy. Soon they meet in the game where Christy says this. I haven't talked to Raphael since the 80s. He ghosted me, you know. Yeah, it's awkward history. Um, this may sound crazy, but I'm not sure I want to talk online about that. Would you be willing to meet me in person and keep me anonymous? I think it's time I talk. Going down in the description, we are told that our main character is already on their way to meet Christy when this video is uploaded. So after meeting with her, Christy gives an interview where she reveals that she was an adult film star in the 1980s and her manager was Raphael Cossacks. Cossacks was reached out to and hired by Ferroni Productions to bring Christy onto set. Apparently, before Ferroni was making cartoons for kids, they were shooting adult films. But this is where the lines begin to cross in this story. Take a look. So, let me go back a little bit. It was late 88. Rafi came to me and he said that's Raphael Cosacks yeah he said he had this amazing new job um it was with a new company that was just breaking into the adult film industry this is Ferrone yeah I think it was Italian um and it was had nothing to do with cartoons no this was straight um live action pornography not animation pornography so <coughs> <laughs> Do you need water or something? Okay. It was a three day bronze who attended Fuckfest for filming. Did they let you take breaks? We had like one break a day. Um, it wasn't so bad back then. I think people nowadays are so sensitive. And they, they always want to take breaks. But uh, yeah, you know, I, I fucked so many men, you know, of all ages. Some of them were definitely famous, too. Like famous porn stars? Like Ron Jeremy or something? Am I totally anonymous right now? No, no, we got you. Uh, we're gonna be using the mosaic filter from... My voice, too? Yeah. Okay. Just like in the Second Life interview. Okay. So... One of them was... Newt Gingrich. Um, it was way before he was famous. What do you mean, like the politician in California? Yeah. It was him. I remember when I, after the fact, I saw him on the news, my jaw hit the floor. I couldn't believe it. Like, I fucked him. The guy who left his, his dying wife for a new bitch. <laughs> I mean, a lot of them were politicians. But new, I mean, I'll never forget his disgusting birthmarks. I mean, all of them had birthmarks, but his were just the most most vile. Okay, so we're supposed to do this face writing scene, right? I go to jump on his head, and he's telling me, Honey, don't worry. I can hold my breath for over 15 minutes. And then the producer starts shushing him. And then for any ones, um, filming ended, and I, I tried to reach back out to Rafi, and he wasn't picking up the phone. It, it was so weird. We just had our highest paying gig yet, and... He was nowhere to be found. After that, I stopped getting contract offers. 
and features and, and cameos. Nothing. My line was dry. I, I wasn't getting anything anymore. Well, okay, so I should say that at the time, I was addicted to cocaine. Rafi, he would feed me bumps like I was on a powder-only diet. After he left, I was forced to go cold turkey. It was a blessing because um, I was able to quit that and I decided not to get another manager after him because he left porn. I, I somewhat left porn and then I found out I was pregnant and later the next summer I gave birth to a, a beautiful, amazing, perfect baby boy. Who was the father? I don't know. I mean, I was known as the queen of cream pies or the queen pie. I, you know, had so much in me all the time. It could have been anyone's. We'll never know. And then Ferrone took him. I knew it was them. I recognized the men that came into my house that night. They're the people who said, don't talk about him being able to hold his breath during face riding? Yep, it was the same people at the Gonzo attended Film Fest of filming that told Newt, stop talking about holding your breath so much. It was the same people. They stole my baby. So this is a cartoon that Faraone makes. Do you know anything about this? No, I don't know any anything about this TV show. He sounds familiar. Is that Gilbert Gott Gottfried? Is he that Jewish stand-up comedian? Yeah, no, I fucked him too. Wait, when? During the... Yeah, yeah. It's all a blur, but I, I definitely fucked him right under the hot lights. Of the Ferrone production? Yeah. Uh, super weird birthmarks. Um, but, you know, he doesn't yell as much in person. Wait! I'm sorry. What? What was that date? July 11th? 1989? That's when my baby was born. Alright, so let's first talk about who Ferone was have come on to set with Christy. As she said, lots of politicians, including Newt Gingrich, would be in these films. But she keeps mentioning that they all had very obvious birthmarks. Not to mention that the Ferroni producers apparently had some sort of control over Newt Gingrich by telling him to hush up about being able to hold his breath, which is really weird. We also learned that one of the famous people that filmed with Christy was Gilbert Gottfried, who also had birthmarks. Which leads us to the big reveal at the end of the video, that important date that was highlighted in the cartoon for us earlier in my video was a day of birth for Christy's son, whose father is unknown and the child taken by Ferone. So let's quickly connect this to what we saw in the video game. We saw that something that was taking the form of Liz from the Garfield comic was giving birth to a creature. And in the last level, we saw that Ferone scientists were manipulating the embryo before the child was born. Could all of that be referencing this adult film production at Ferone? Christy does say that everything she filmed was erased when she was done. So what if the adult filming was just a front for some sort of breeding operation so Ferroni could do more research on manipulating embryos in the mother? But also remember that the last clip of the video game told us that Ronnie, Augie, and Gilbert were born. So that leaves the question, well who is Christie's son and why were they taken? I want to go back to the Ferroni website which is constantly changing at this point of the ARG. Now when going to it, the website has somewhat been restored. And on the front page, there is a single panel of a Gilbert Garfield comic. Downloading it reveals the entire strip, which appears to be mocking our main character, 
about uploading the HOA camera footage from the night he blacked out. Also, the winery password has been changed, so there must be new secrets hidden somewhere on here now. But let's go back to the YouTube channel and look at that camera footage that our main character got from that strange night. So could it really have been Austin that left the message for our character, the college student that first started this entire ARG? Could Austin actually be a Ferone employee? After all, it was him who told our character where to get the Gilbert Garfield clips. And it was Austin who asked our character for help on their college capstone project. Could all of that been a lie? Also, Austin is wearing a hentai haven sweater in this photo. You know, Christy mentioned a lot of adult film sites in that video. While she says it's all been erased from the internet, I was still curious. So I looked up her adult film name on all those adult websites she listed out, and got nothing. So at least she's telling the truth there. I'm just happy there wasn't an adult film filmed with ARG clues on one of these sites I would have to try and edit around. At this point in the ARG, I was at a crossroads. Like I said before we dove into this rabbit hole, I've been playing this ARG since July, and every time I've said, okay, now let's make a video, a new part of the game comes out. So. Do I wait a little longer for the next part in the ARG and we go on? Or do we stop and watch this last video and talk about the Grintly TikTok account? Well, I'm making the executive decision to end this internal nightmare. But let's go to the most recent video on the channel, which is titled, What Austin Sent Me. In the description, we get this from Max. Austin sending me this after the public discovery of Christy Vaginas was very off-putting, and very edgy even for him. I'm not sure what his goals are. He hasn't responded to me asking what he wants. I wish I could contact him. Now this video does have some gory scenes that I'll try to censor, but you'll notice that our character Max has already done that to parts of the video. So I'll let it run first and then we'll take it apart. But brace yourself. Happy birthday to you! Happy birthday, dear! Happy birthday to you! I heard that this baby was born via the C section, which is short for cesarean. 
from Big Fish's game after Cesar Romero. And he would bend over and have these uh, uh, boy toys throw orange slices directly into his ass. And they call this the cutting room floor, where they also left half the scenes in the big sleep. And so now, when you celebrate birth, the family can focus on blowing out the candles instead of blowing out the vagina. Yeah, this doesn't seem to fit into the cartoon show we've seen earlier. First off, this is taking place in a hospital or laboratory. Gilbert Garfield is performing a C-section on a woman. C-section clearly being a reference to the Julius Caesar, because the C in C-section stands for a cesarean. This is all convenient that Austin sent this when Christy just explained that she became pregnant at Ferone. But I doubt this is meant to be her because at the end, Garfield tosses the newborn into a toxic waste barrel. As it goes on, we get this censored image that says, lewd animation of Mussolini's corpse being masturbated onto by Gilbert Garfield's penis. Then we get one that says black and white film in a dark room of a doctor being shot in the head. 40s World War II maybe, unsure. The next one to pop up says 70s looking film of CIA agents getting stabbed in the face with what seems to be medieval spears. The next one says graphic voyeur film shot through a window. Appears to be an older Caesar Romero having anal sex with Muammar Gaddafi. Joker costume discarded in corner, black and white. Then the last one says, candid footage of Gaddafi's execution, sodomy with bayonets. Yeah, I don't know where to start with all this. I guess we at least see more clues pointing at World War II. And Italy was an Axis power with Mussolini as their fascist leader. So is Ferone hinting that they were involved with Mussolini's death? But what does Gaddafi have to do with Ferone? For those of you playing the home game, Muammar Gaddafi was the leader of Libya in the Middle East after he led a revolution in the 60s and 70s. By all accounts, Gaddafi was practically the Middle Eastern version of Hitler, who believed in extreme nationalism and socialism for his country. He ruled until 2011, when the Arab Spring began and the Libyan Civil War broke out. To avoid an hour-long history video, Gaddafi was captured by the rebels, and just like in Star Wars, they drug him into the street, pulled out their iPhones, and then proceeded to stab the ruler up the ass with knives and bayonets. But the theme song for the show says they shipped Odie's body to Abu Dhabi, which while in the Middle East is not Libya. So I don't know, maybe Ferone has also had a hand in overthrowing this leader as well as Mussolini. So before we stop here tonight, let's go back to Twitter and see what other players have found so far. Honestly, this one blows my mind and I didn't even know how to decipher this clue. Apparently in a single frame of that last video Austin sent, there is a spectrogram, which is an audio layer that reveals this clue in the frame. Garfield's Sentence Level 1 Part 5. This is referencing a free online flash game for little kids to learn how to write sentences. Going to that website and going to that level reveals the code they are siblings, which happens to be the password to the new Ferone Truths website's contact page. Entering that part of the site shows us this. At first we get another comic strip, but hovering over the image reveals a link back to YouTube. Clicking on the comic strip takes us to that viral video called Pinky the Cat, which is that old viral video of the orange cat going fucking sicko mode on the leash. The obvious reference is not hard to miss. 
The words on the website also say, contact us, contact him. Well, I think Max takes that advice and decides to text Austin's brother, Dion. So hopefully Dion can give Max and us some insight on what is happening to Austin. The very last thing I want to look at before we wrap up tonight is this TikTok account called Grintly. Whoever this is, is watching Max's online movements and definitely has access to a lot of Ferrone footage from the Gilbert Garfield show, which leads me to believe that this is one of those Ferrone agents we know exist. Going to Grantley's Twitter, we see all the posts he has put onto TikTok, but I want to look at these two posts that look to be from an episode of Gilbert Garfield that Max didn't have. Take a look. be perfect you could tell that at a glance unless of course we ran into i'm just taking stock of myself as a doctor because i do feel like i'm really just getting started Well, in the first one, we got obvious imagery from inside the Ferone lab. And in the second one, we get a line from the ant saying that Ferone will take away your child, which connects to the video Austin sent to Max and the story Christy told. Next, on their Twitter, we get this image of a hand with the pinky being shot off. At first, this doesn't seem like much. But I believe this is what proves that Grintley is running the Ferrone Truth website, constantly changing passwords on it to halt Max and our ability to learn more about Ferrone. And that's because in this image, the pinky is popping off the hand. And in that contact page of the Ferrone website, we got that hidden link to a viral Lastly, on Grintley's Twitter, I want to look at the website link in the bio f4rr.1. Following this takes you to this website, which is a codebreaker's wet dream. First, there is this paragraph of code that illustrates an image of Grintley's profile picture. Second, there are these symbols to the right that make up a logo for Grintley if you look closely. Beneath those is a pixel image of a man standing by a car under a sign that says Ferone. And beneath that is this tiny link that when clicked takes you to a catalog of images of Gilbert Garfield in the same art style. Scrolling down there is a bold company logo for Ferone, so I'm really certain now that this character is a Ferone operative. And for one final cliffhanger for this video, clicking the original image of Grintley's website brings us to yet another password protected page, which I'm guessing is a password that hasn't been revealed yet in the ARG. So who is Grintley? Well, we definitely know they work for Ferone, but I believe that this is Austin now. Not only that, but Grintley's work has been now uploaded onto the Greg Truth channel. And since Greg is dead, I believe Grintley was the one who silenced him, under the orders of Ferone, since Greg was the unhinged conspiracist taking on the company. And this whole story with Austin asking Max to discover the original Gilbert Garfield tapes was all a setup for some unknown reason. Could Austin be setting Max up to be silenced like he did to Greg? I've seen a lot of people theorize that Austin has been taken or murdered by Ferone for giving the tapes to Max, but honestly I think this series is going to get a lot darker than that as it goes on. Normally I like to theorize everything that is going on at the end of my videos, but this ARG is still going on and it's definitely going to change by the time this video gets out. And by the time this does get uploaded, there'll be a lot more to talk about. So we'll stop here and come back with a part two for this ARG. 
I'm sure a lot of you have questions, and unfortunately without a completed game, I can't give you any straight answers. But as you're watching this, I can guarantee that I am already putting the next parts of the ARG together and working on another video for all of you. It's bizarre, it's disturbing, and it's the most fun ARG I've played since starting this channel. And I'm happy to share that experience with all of you. So if you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe for more content. And if you want to support my channel, you can join my Patreon using the link in the description and get your name at the end of the videos like these beautiful souls here. And if you want more pagan content, you can always follow me on Twitter using my handle. With that, this has been an exhausted pagan valley, and I wish you all a good evening.